Okay, the defendant's motion to strike is denied. Do we have any objections to the motion other than the motion to strike for being untimely? The defense does object, Your Honor, but, and I have for the court's consideration, and I believe Mr. Stone pulled the same case. It's Creech v. Ryan, 972 Southern 2nd, 1021, 3rd District, 2008. I'll be in the top of the list. Thank you. And basically, Your Honor, what Creech says is that first, in order for there to be a modification of bond, there has to be good cause. Good cause under the rule, I think that's Rule 3.131, Parent D, encompasses and means a change in circumstances. So, and then I believe Creech would point out that it's the state's burden to show a change in circumstances. Okay, well, then we'll go forward with the hearing on it. Yeah, I just want to know if you had any objections. To the form of the motion, I do not. Or to the motion being entered at all, and since you do have an objection, we'll go ahead and proceed with the hearing. Thank you. Mr. Stone, call your first witness. The state calls Assistant State Attorney Tyrone Polk. Okay, Mr. Polk, please come up to the podium, raise your right hand, and be sworn. Your Honor, in the event, I didn't mean to interrupt. In the event there are any other state witnesses here, the defense would invoke the rule of sequestration. Okay, are there any other persons sitting in the courtroom that are going to be testifying? Yes, and actually potentially two other witnesses, Your Honor. Detective Michelle Hernandez, who was here, and Probation Officer Adam Vincent, who was also here. If the two of you will please stand for just a moment. Okay, the rule has been invoked, and what that means is that none of the witnesses may be in the courtroom while other witnesses are testifying. It also means that you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody other than the attorneys. So if you'll please wait outside the courtroom. There are different witness rooms there you can, until you're called. Thank you. Mr. Polk, I'm sorry, go ahead and raise your right hand to be sworn. Yes, I do. What's your name, please? Tyrone Polk. And Mr. Polk, for the record, would you spell your first and last name? First name, that's actually my middle name. My first initial is S. Middle name is spelled T-Y-R-O-N-E. Last name is Polk, P-O-L-K. And what is your occupation? I'm an assistant state attorney here in Seminole County. Now, let me direct your attention to May 16, 2015, and ask you if you had an occasion to be the first appearance assistant state attorney in the case of the State of Florida v. Matthew Apperson, case number 15-1381 CFA. Yes. And during, who was the first appearance judge that particular morning? Judge Rudisill. Now, at that hearing, was the subject or topic of a system called proximity alert discussed? It was. Do you want me to speak more? Please. We discussed the possibility of GPS monitoring as a condition of the defendant's bond. And I have to specify, did you mean in chambers or on the record? On the record. Okay. And in chambers, but particularly on the record. All right. On the record, it was brought up after discussions in chambers. The state requested the GPS monitor be a requirement of the defendant bonding from the jail. And the purpose of it was, of course, that we could include the proximity monitor, which is a device that notifies the victim. He wears a device with him and notifies the victim if the defendant comes within a certain distance from the victim's person. It was requested on the record by myself and also with the information that the victim wished for his home address to remain confidential. 
Okay. Uh, not to be placed on the record. Now, at, at that point, um, uh, or at any point, uh, did, uh, was a um, was ultimately the GPS system, including the proximity alert feature, uh, ordered by Judge Russo? The uh, GPS monitor was not, but the judge went on to express that he would have ordered it, but he was apparently under the impression that it could not be ordered without an exclusionary address, without a, a stationary address. He thought that you couldn't order the GPS monitor at all or that the, the jail wouldn't be able to accomplish it or something along those lines. And would that address have been Mr. Zimmerman's address? Exactly. And uh, was Mr. Zimmerman's address ever disclosed in order to allow or implement the GPS system with the proximity alert? It was not disclosed on the record. And at the time, I didn't have the address either. Speaking with the investigating officer, Mr. Zimmerman, Zimmerman was adamant he did not want his address or any information released to the public. And uh, was that the basis for the system, including the, pro the GPS system, including the feature of proximity alert not implemented because uh, it was the understanding that Mr. Zimmerman's address would be required? Yes, the, the judge, actually on the record. Judge, that would be asking that question beyond this witness's competence as to what the mental processes of Judge Rudisola were. Sustained. What was stated on the record with respect to the implementation of the GPS system or why it was not implemented? The judge stated on the record that he would order the GPS monitoring, um, but he believed he was unable to um, without a, an exclusionary address. But he, he would have ordered it if we had the address, but he believed it wasn't possible to institute it, so he did not. And that would include the, the proximity alert system. Right. Without the GPS monitor, the proximity system won't work because it's a device that activates when the GPS unit comes close to it. Okay. I have nothing further. Ross? Mr. Polk, have you um, authored any memos, inter-office memos, or anything else with regard to this? No, case. nothing Nothing in writing. Uh, there may have been some notes on the case just indicating what the judge actually did, but no. Um, you did, however, speak with Mr. Zimmerman? I did not. Uh, the investigating officer spoke with Mr. Zimmerman and relayed his wishes to me. Uh, he didn't even want the state attorney, unless absolutely necessary, to know about his information. According to the officer, I, I didn't speak to them myself. So the information that you just relayed came to you secondhand? Right, from the investigating officer, that's correct. You've had conversations with Mr. Stone about your testimony here? Uh, I spoke with him this morning. He actually came to my office and spoke with me about the, the issue, yes. And, not with, and as I understand your testimony, notwithstanding your request, uh, the first appearance judge declined to impose a condition of GPS monitoring. Is that correct? It, it was an interesting, well, his, his statement was interesting. It, if, if you would, mm -hmm. and I don't mean to cut you off, if you would answer yes or no, but then if you'd like to explain your answer, please do. Well, he did not institute the GPS monitor, but his statements indicated that he would have, but for what he believed to be the requirement that we have an address. I don't have anything further. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any redirect? No. May Mr. Polk be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. You are excused. Thank Call you. your next witness. Adam Vincent. Adam Vincent.
I do. Thank you. What's your name, please? And for the record, spell your first and last name. Yes, sir. My name is Adam Vincent. First name, A-D-A-M. Uh, last name, Vincent, V-I-N-C-E-N-T. What is your occupation? I am a senior probation officer for Seminole County Probation. Now, Mr. Vincent, uh, does your office, and, and including you, do you get involved in the implementation of uh, GPS systems, implementation of those systems uh, with regard to individuals who are released pre-trial with conditions? Yes, sir. We handle, we handle generally all of them unless they're sentenced to state probation. And um, as part of the, of the GPS system that you and your office gets involved in and implements, is there a, a, a feature known as proximity alert? Yes, sir, there is. And explain to the court what is proximity alert? A proximity device was uh, uh, created for, uh, for the most part, for victims of domestic violence um, and, uh, or others, but it's primary, primarily utilized for persons who want to have some kind of alert if they are roaming outside of their home where traditionally an exclusionary, exclusionary zone would be placed, such as a grocery store or a beach or something like that. This is a device that they take with them, a portable device that will act as almost a roaming exclusionary zone. So if they were to make contact with an unwanted person away from the residence, they would get some kind of notification, and our sheriff's office would also get notification that the two parties have come in proximity of each other. And the two parties being one, a named victim and the other, the defendant? For the most part, yes, sir. Okay. Now, in order for this uh, proximity alert feature to be implemented, is it necessary that the named victim disclose his or her address? No, sir, it's not. I have nothing further. Thank you, Cross. I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. May Mr. Vincent be excused? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, excused. Call your next witness. I have please. nothing further. All right. Defense, have any witnesses? The defense does not. Know. All right. Thank you. Let me hear argument. Well, Your Honor, the state's motion. May I go first? Please? Yes, you do. Um, the, uh, the case law, including one of the cases that uh, um, both myself and Mr. LaFay <coughs> cited to the court, and, uh, and specifically um, uh, that's uh, Creech versus uh, Ryan. Creech is C-R-E-E-C-H, located at 972 Southern 2nd, page 1021, a third DCA case, 2008. And there's another case that I'd like to uh, present to the court uh, that's uh, called Santos versus Garrison, located at 691 Southern 2nd, 1172, 4th DCA case, 1997. Uh, may I approach her? Thank you. You, did you give a copy to Mr. Lafay? Uh, yes, I have. If I can um, cite the, the Santos case, and I'm referring specifically, and they're both relatively short cases. Santos is just two pages. I'm citing to head notes one and two. And th there's a part of the, uh, and actually the very first sentence is a long sentence, but there's a particular part that I want to emphasize to the court. But anyway, it says, it is undisputed that an increase in or revocation of bond may be imposed only based upon a change in circumstances or, and that's the important thing, it's in the disjunctive, or information not disclosed to the court at the time bond was previously established. And it's the state's burden to establish such a new information, uh, to bring such new information to the court's attention. That's pretty much the, the general principle of law. A um, couple of things that I want to, uh, to emphasize to the court uh, the standard is not, was the information unavailable? The standard is not, could it have been presented to the first appearance judge? The standard is not, should it have been presented to the first judge? It's clear the standard is very narrow and very straightforward, and that is, is it new information? 
that is now being presented to this court that was not presented to the first appearance judge. And clearly, the evidence supports that. The first appearance judge from the testimony presented to this court was under the misimpression that an address was required to implement the GPS system, but particularly the proximity alert feature of the system. Judge Rudisill, understandably, because it's a feature that I really haven't heard of and apparently the court personnel didn't hear of, but the fact that the victim's address was not necessary was a fact that was not known to Judge Rudisill. And now it's been established to this court, that's the new information that's being presented to this court, that the victim's address is not necessary. So based upon that, based upon not so much the change of circumstances, although I would certainly argue that this could be classified as a change of circumstances, but specifically based upon information, and once again I'm referring to Santos, information not disclosed to the court at the time the bond was previously established. So based upon that, we'd ask the court to implement that feature. And one of the quick observations, Your Honor, and I'll sit down, what we're asking is reasonable. This does not impose any type of restrictions, travel restrictions on Mr. Apperson. He's not required to stay away from any particular locations. It's just simply a feature that alerts Mr. Zimmerman to the presence of Mr. Apperson being nearby, and then Mr. Zimmerman would be the one who leaves. So Mr. Apperson doesn't have to leave or go anywhere. It's Mr. Zimmerman that wants to know so he can leave. So it's a reasonable request considering the circumstances, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Lefebvre? Your Honor, my argument is, first, with regard to change in circumstances. The change in circumstances, circumstances goes to or adheres to the defendant. It doesn't mean, it means that somehow something has, there's been a change that makes Mr. Apperson more of a danger or more of a flight risk. Every case that you have, Creech, Garrison, they all deal with the characteristics or a change in the characteristics or the situation of the defendant. It does, none of them deal with, for example, if, let us put it differently, and I know hypotheticals have their limited uses. However, if the proximity alert did not exist, just didn't exist, Judge Rudisill knew it was in the offing, knew it was coming, just didn't exist. Three days later, he's out, it does exist, here we are. That's not a change in circumstances for Mr. Apperson, just because there's a new program. There could be a new program in a month from now where they say anybody who's, you know, got these charges, well, they have to spend X amount of time in their house. So, okay, well, let's do that. That's not a change in circumstances. It is not a change in circumstances where this man has done one thing. He's scrupulously adhered to the court's orders. He's, there's no evidence that he even knows of Mr. Zimmerman's whereabouts or his address. And there's no evidence that Mr. Zimmerman has even requested or wants this. Now, you'd think that that's the least they could bring forward here. Something saying, well, yeah, we want it, he wants it. Because I think he has to be fitted with something, too, although that's not before the court. But I would say that there has not been a change of circumstances within the meaning, and I think it's the plain meaning, of 3.131 per ND. And so without that, without some evidence that Mr. Apperson has done something to increase the risk, I would say their motion, my argument is that their motion is ill taken. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lefebvre. Your case is under submission.
Thank you. Very much response. Well, very briefly, Your Honor. Um, the, uh, the passage in, uh, in Santos is, is quite narrow, quite specific. Mr. Buffet wants to focus on uh, change in circumstances, which is certainly uh, something that one may interpret with regard to cir circumstances concerning uh, Mr. Apperson. Uh, but uh, there is an addition to that uh, particular holding, and uh, that addition is or, and once again I emphasize is in the disjunctive, or upon information that was not disclosed previously to the court. Uh, it doesn't say information regarding the defendant. Uh, it doesn't say information concerning changes in circumstances regarding the defendant. It says straightforward information that was not previously disclosed. The rule just simply makes reference to good cause. So this is really an interpretation of, of what good cause is. Does Mr. Zimmerman have a, a position as to what he's requesting? Be oh, I can tell the court that he wants it, and uh, if necessary, um, you know, we can put evidence on to that effect. I wasn't expecting that. I don't think it's required that we present that, but I can, as well, it isn't court, required. I was just Mr. Lafay had uh, brought that up, so well, I, I can represent to the court that he wants it. I would object to that testimony by Mr. Stone, although he won't be the first assistant to take the stand at this hearing. I'm, I'm not considering it as testimony. You had just at, made that comment, so I was just curious. Thank you. We would not be making this motion if he didn't, Your Honor. Okay. Um, rule 3.131D um, does provide for this court as the uh, court that's assigned to preside over the uh, criminal trial in this case um, that I do have jurisdiction to hear any applications by the defense or the state to modify uh, the bond. Um, subsection D2 states the state may apply for modification of bail by showing good cause and with at least three hours notice to the attorney for the defendant. So having jurisdiction, um, the uh, case um, specifically Santos uh, versus Garrison at 22 Florida Law Weekly D1027, also cited at 691 Southern 2nd, 1172, 4th DCA, 1997. Um, in addition to, or in the alternative to, a change in circumstances upon information not disclosed to the court at the time the bond was previously established. Uh, the testimony before the court is that at first appearance that the indication was that um, Judge Ru Rudisell had said that since Mr. Zimmerman did not want his address disclosed, that he was not going to impose a GPS monitor. Um, so the court's going to find that um, the GPS uh, monitor will be a, made a condition of the bond uh, pursuant to that case and specifically the proximity alert feature. So there will be no travel restrictions placed upon Mr. Apperson. It's just that he be fitted with this device with that feature for the sole purpose of determining whether or not you're in the proximity of Mr. Zimmerman and that he be alerted to that fact so he could take whatever actions he deems uh, necessary for his protection. Um, I will waive the cost of the GPS pending the outcome of the case. Okay. Anything further? No, no. Court is in recess. Thank you. Did you want your copy of your motion back? Uh, Mr. LaFay, did you want your copy of your motion back? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Your Honor, may I ask the court, when, when uh, should this system be imposed? Now. Now? It's made you. a condition of the bond. Thank you. Okay, thank you.